this is a warning. What you're about to see is literally going to be painful for a lot of you, so viewer discretion is advised. This is a very sad day. This is my storage unit. And it's been great, except it's a total racket. When I got it, it was $19.99 a month. And then a few months later, I get the bill and it's $29.99. So I call them and I say, what's going on? And they said, oh, that was a promotional deal. I said, we didn't talk about any promotional deals. And they said, oh yeah, that was a promotional deal, but that's it, $29.99, right? So I go, okay. You know, it's not horrible. $29.99 versus, so 10 bucks more. Keep my stuff safe. And since I am homeless, <laughs> I gotta have somewhere to keep stuff that's valuable, right? Certain things you just can't get rid of. So I go, okay. So then a few months go by and I get another notice or I get another bill and now it's $39.99. So I call him, I go, what, what is going on? It was 19, he said it was 29, okay. Now it's 39. Oh, well, um, it's supply and demand. And I said, what, how does that work? Well, we have 200 units and they're all full. So that means demand is up. So the price goes up and I go, that's bullshit. So now it's 39.99. Oh, but it won't go up from there. That It'll stay there. So I don't have a choice because at that point, I'm not anywhere near. I'm out of the country. So a few months go by, $49.99. I call them again. I go, what is going on? You told me $39. It's not going up. Well, supply and demand, right? And I go, oh, let me guess. You're all full, so demand is up, right? Yes. So now we're at $49. Then a couple months go by and now it's 59 and that's the scam. That's how they do it. So if you're interested in any of these, be very careful because that's what they do. I was here a year ago, clearing out or loading in a guy next to me goes, Hey buddy, uh, you want to look at some stuff? And he's here dumping said they've had it for 10 years. They've been here, but they live 300 miles away. Ooh, nice plane, look at that. There's an airport right here. Beautiful. Beautiful plane. So, he's dumping all this stuff, and he goes, yeah, it's my, my wife, and I told her it's enough. We can't be paying, we paid $10,000, because 10 years they haven't ever used it. They moved away from Portland and went down south. He may be watching this, Klamath Falls. So, he's looking at mine, he's bringing over, it's all killer stuff too, fishing reels, fishing rods, all kinds, it's all camping stuff, same, all these things, <laughs> it's always camping stuff, and he's just dumping it on me, and I go, well, I'll try and, you know, because I'm thinking I can sell it, and he's looking at my thing, and I go, yeah, they just raised it, and at this time it was, you know, excuse me, $39.99, he goes, I go, yeah, can you believe that, $39.99, he goes, Excuse me? I go, yeah, they raised it. Now it's $39.99. He goes, $39.99? He goes, ours is $129 a month. And I go, you gotta be kidding me. And he goes ballistic. He goes, what the fuck? Jesus Christ. So for 10 years, whatever, since they've raised it on him, they're paying for the same exact unit. $129. So that's how it goes, kids. So I'm gonna open this up. The sad part about today is that most of this stuff will be dumped. It'll go to Goodwill. I try and give it all to friends, but nobody wants it because nobody's into it. Right? Tents, sleeping bags, cots, all outdoor gear, but nobody wants it. They could care less. And I've tried. So you get to a point with this stuff where you go, you know what? It's going right in the garbage. Adios. So let's see what's left. I've already made one dump, but we'll check it out. Okay, here's a tip that I've learned over the years with these storage units. Or any way you're dealing with keys, what I do, I put the keys in, I unlock it, like I just did, and then I put them on the floor in the corner with the keys in them. 
Write it in. Because if not, when you lose your keys to one of these places, it's a big deal. Okay? I had thought I lost my keys once. I asked them, I called, mistake, and said, hey, did anybody turn in any keys for unit, you know, D90? No. Oh, did you lose your keys? And I go, well, I can't find them right now. I'm not sure if I lost them, but I'm looking. Oh, okay, well, we're going to need you to fill out this form and this form and this form. He goes, panic, ballistic. And I go, whoa, whoa, whoa. I go, I don't think I lost them. I just can't find them. I wanted to see maybe I was there and I left them. Ballistic. I'm either mailing them here. Insurance, blah, blah, blah. And then they're going to charge $50 per lock to cut it. And I go, well, I've got bolt cutters. I'll just cut it. No, that's not allowed. That's not permitted. So I found the keys. No issue. There's my little security knife in the door. So here's the unit. Now I already came with my buddy, Big Hoss, and this was all the way up. It's a little unorganized right now. But I already made a bunch of dumps. And now it's just, you know, extremely difficult. I mean, here's a wool blanket I've had for I don't know, probably six years. It's extremely thick, beautiful. But nobody wants this stuff. And I've got, you know, five of them. So I've got to get down to one. You know, that's the problem with this stuff is one is none, two is one, which is true, but seven isn't one. And that's the problem with this survival gear and all this stuff. It's an addiction. It's a sickness, right? So how do you pass that up? Because I get these at you know, goodwill. This is a 1950s Pendleton. So how do I pass this up? To replace this now would be easily $500. This is a super thick, and it's from the 50s, soft, as a baby's bottom. You know, how do you replace that? Except, you know, like I said, I've got seven of them. And you can't have seven. You know, one is none, two is one, that works. I live in my van, so I've got, you know, 10 feet of living space, and you can't, you just can't do it. Basically, you can have one of each, one wool blanket, one backpack, you've got to have one kit. Over all these years, that's what I've realized, and it's extremely painful to get rid of this stuff, but that's just reality. You know, if I didn't have the van, the reality is it's one backpack, one kit. That's the reality. If anything ever really happened, it's what you have on your back. That's it. There's no storage units. There's no garages. There's nothing. So you've got, that's what you got, what you can carry. And that's got to be light. There's a lot of lessons in this. So, I'm going to start pulling stuff out. You know, what do I do with these? You know, here's my beautiful muck boots. Muck Lux. Beautiful. How do I get rid of those? These will be my summer boot. These are my Keens. Love these, super ultralight. And these are trashed. But still a great boot. So this I'll keep for my summer boot. Unless this is a waterproof one, which it might be. You've seen what I do with the waterproof ones. I puncture the layer. Let's see. What's that say? Keen dry, waterproof. Ugh. You saw that short that I did where I take the drill and I. <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm puncturing his waterproof boots. All it is is it has a balloon in it, literally. It's just a balloon. And that's great. It does keep your feet dry. But it also creates an instant pool. It's just a pool. Like, you know, you go swimming in, so you're soaking. It's not good. Because now you're swimming in your boot, which isn't safe because you're slipping. Your feet are wet. And let's say that you have to cross wet terrain and whatnot. You get done. You pull off your boot. Your sock's soaking wet. And it's cold out. Say it's the end of the night. You've made it to your location. Now you got soaking wet socks and wet feet. So I like shoes that breathe. Even during the winter, I don't like the waterproof. So what I'll do with them to try and save them, I take a drill. There's a short on it. And I just drill holes and I pop the balloon, let it breathe. You know, that boot that you saw me do that with in the short is a Under Armour. 
It's about a $200 boot. Tactical boot. But hey, I'm saving it, really. Because during the winter it kind of works. But you see what I'm trying to say? You let me know. Waterproof for me. It's awesome to stay dry, but you pay the price. So I like stuff that breathes. It's a nice, um, you know, I love this BDU. This blouse, this jacket. Because it's a very different one. It's super lightweight. I just love it. Great camo pattern, too, for me. So I can't get rid of that. These little heaters are just beautiful. They're called My Heat. You can get them. They used to be 20 bucks on line. Great little heaters. And they draw very little if you're on um, Jackery or Blue Eddy. Excellent little product. This alone, it only draws um, very, very low wattage off your solar generator. Great little kit. Great little piece of kit. If you're living in a vehicle, basically. It would work in the tent, too. You know, just sad. These are great. This is brand new, too. Anything Coleman is going to be bulletproof. But yeah, this I got brand new. What I love about these is I can put this directly on to the... Um, this one I don't think I need a converter. I think this one will screw right on. Let's see, it's got the mini. Okay, so it's a mini, but I have a converter hose. So I convert it, do, 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 and I can go right onto the large propane tanks. Because those little green propane tanks are a joke. So I convert everything I use, again, living in a vehicle. I have a big propane tank and I just get the conversion hose and adapter. So maybe I can sell that, but you know, again, if I try and give that away, mm -mm, nobody wants it. Now this I've had, this is my Coleman. It's propane and here's the adapter. So you can see here the original. And then if I get up here, this is a great, these are awesome. I hang this in my window. This little clip goes on the window. Love that. And then the adapter. Oh, here it is. Okay, so here's the original unit that comes off. It's a very small little piece. Comes back. Here's its control on off. And then here's the adapter. So this is a filter that allows me to convert the size, right? So that I can go boom, boom. And then here I've got the hose. And then this runs directly to the large propane. This is the mail. So this is my trusted stove propane that I use, just a two burner. This has been with me for a long time, bulletproof. What's great about having these is obviously to cook with. And again, we're talking about living in a vehicle, but you can heat with them too. You know, if you watch the warnings or whatever, you're never supposed to do it. But that is no different than this, okay? So this, right here, portable catalytic space heater. This is the exact same thing, right? It's hooked up to propane, right here. And this, you know, emits heat, keeps you warm. It's exactly the same thing as this. So a lot of people, to save space, dual purpose, use the, you use your Coleman stove as your heater inside your vehicle. What else we got? Oh, this is where it starts getting sad. You know. Right? Because I've got two of these. My favorite. This is what I wear. These are the U.S. Military Gore-Tex. I think they just call them wet weather. I don't know if this one's Gore-Tex. Some of them say Gore-Tex. Some are just nylon. I think they're called cold weather. What are they technically called? Medium long. Parka cold weather camouflage, yeah. Some of them will have a little gort, a little tag in them. 
you know, it'll be somewhere here and it says Gore-Tex. But this is my rain gear. So I have the pant and the, the bottom. I'm sorry, I have the jacket and the bottom. And this one's pretty mint. I think this is my mint, mint one. Actually, I have three of those right now. So guess where they're going? I'll keep one and two of them are going in the garbage. Because nobody wants them. Literally. Let me pull this stuff out. Like I said, this is a sad video. It's just very sad, but you can't keep everything. You can't keep all the toys. If you watch my buddy, Mickey from Hampshire Outdoors, Mickey and Caroline, he was just talking about downsizing. And we were talking about, you know, you can't keep all your toys, just like when we die. You know, they're saying like, the goal of life is to see who has the most toys when you die. But once you die, you take nothing with you, literally. No money, no possessions. So, yeah, this stuff. So my BDU pants, this is a beautiful, this might be proper. Let's see who makes these. No, those are just military issues, but beautiful print on those. Very different. So we'll see, I'll have to go through them because I have multiple. Then Woodland Camo is my favorite. But I like to keep, basically per jobs that I'm working, I'll be in different environments. And your environment is desert, snow, or forest, or urban. So urban, you're going to be blacked out. Forest, you're going to be woodland camo. Desert, you're going to be desert camo. So I keep one of each. But even that, so there's four uniforms right when you're <laughs> imagine if you were on on foot that's it you got your backpack well you can't take all four so then okay what works in all four well woodland camo woodland camo is going to work in the desert it's going to work in an urban assignment it's going to work in the forest obviously this is a shirt that i love Beautiful top. You know, these are things that I love, but they're functional too. Love this one. And it's got the shoulder pad inserts. That's what I'll decide because certain BDU pant, depending on the year, will have a pocket sewn in here. Basically, you know, like this. But it'll just be a pocket, but you can slide down a knee pad insert. This is the shirt, but there's an insert that goes in here and then you're protected on your elbows. Same thing here on the pant. So I think right now I have about six pairs of these. So I'll go through. This is an old boonie cap. And this is going to be S&W, I know it is, because I just got one. Somebody gave me one. They go, hey, you want this? At the Goodwill bins. This has been around forever, but I waxed it to keep it waterproof and it became real heavy. And the issue with those is those are half polyester or half nylon, half cotton. And once, if you've been in the heat in those, you know you want 100% cotton. So that'll probably go. It just never ends. There's my cast iron that I've had forever. Beautiful pair of Leather Mountain Hardware. Good gloves. Those will go. Nice cast iron. I've cooked on this for years. I think it's unbranded. Just perfect size. If you watch any of my... Um, I did, when I was in the desert, cooking on this stove. Did a lot of um, shorts. I try and just do everything. It's, you know, one pan cooking. So everything's cooked here. You know cast iron you can't beat it that's my cook system so I'll probably keep all that here's my I keep this this will sit on top of the stove it just gives me a little room for cooking stuff grill cutting board oh boy 
Oh boy, what's in here? I mean, look at this already. And we haven't even started. And like I said, I already dumped. It's a beautiful bag here. It's a duffel, but it's a rubberized military. You know, how do I get rid of that? Let's see what's in here. Oi, poncho. Beautiful poncho, my favorites. Can't get rid of that, but I have three of them. Oh, you guys don't know about my bandana obsession. So I get 100% bandanas. You know how versatile they are. But I've got, at one time, I had over 100. Here's a pair of zip-offs. I live in these. I've got them on now. i probably got six pairs of these. Now, how do I get, see? Rescue. Fluorescent orange. Woodland camo, kind of. Kind of. Nice white one. Yeah, it's a sickness. My bandana obsession. I just can't stop. Oh, there's Otter Wax. This is the one of the first ones I ever had. Still some in there. You don't know this company. They're out of Portland, Oregon. Bulletproof. This is to wax any kind of canvas. Anything you need wax. If you contact them, ask for Chris. He's the owner. Great guy. I was doing a um, two halves. It was on my old channel, so the video's lost, but it took three days. And it was two pup tent halves, World War II. One was 42, one's 44. I'm hoping they're in here. And I spent three days waxing it. And I did a full video on it in the pouring rain. Not a drop. I let it pool. I set it up. So it had a, purposely it was concave and let the water pool up to six inches. Sat there for four nights I was up there, nothing, not a drop, no condensation. So otter wax. And Chris is the owner. That's the bag for a snug pack system, I'm sure. i to find that. Yeah, his name is Chris, I believe. It's a great story. I called him and said, hey, I'm using your product and I need to ask some questions. Is it supposed to boil up? You know, do you get it so hot that it boils up and then let it settle? And he said, oh yes, of course you let it come, let it heat gun, you know, boil up. That permeates into the cotton or the canvas. You're doing it right. And he goes, what are you doing? And I tell him, and I'd already posted a video. So I said, oh, I put up a little video of the progress. He watches it while we're on the phone. He goes, hmm. What's your address? And I go, well, I'm going to buy, I need a lot more. I'm going to buy it. And he goes, well, where, where do you live? And I said, I'm in Portland. He goes, I'm in Portland. Yeah. I give him my address and he goes, all right, well, look for a package. And I go, Hey, I wasn't trying to get it for free. I just, anyway, <laughs> two days later, a big shipment of the Otter Wax shows up for free, literally hundred, hundred and fifty dollars worth of it. Probably more. He had just sent it to me because he had seen the video. He knows he knew I wasn't trying to get anything for free. I've always remembered that. And it turns out when I call back to say thank you, I said, I believe his name was Chris. And the secretary, she goes, oh, yeah, Chris is the owner. He's not here right now, but that's great. I just couldn't believe it. That's, that's good business. Here's a beautiful snug pack, dry bag. Obviously, can't get rid of this. Let's see what's in here. I like to try and guess. Okay, what's in here? Because I haven't seen this stuff for 12 months. I believe. Unless I dumped stuff here. After I got back from the desert. Oh! Ooh, look what's inside. Snug. Inside dry bag one is dry bag two. These are killer. I think sea line makes these yeah sea line but this goes with the us uh, the um ilb2 ilbe2 bag united states marine corps bag and these are killer dry bags this goes with that backpack but you basically put all your stuff in squish but it's got this air valve beautiful bags 
And I believe they're spendy. I think this was 50 bucks. Again, it's that, it's the same question. How do you get rid of that? Tell me how you get rid of that. Anybody in, in the comments, tell me. You can't. Oh, look at this. Oh, here's my bivy. This goes with my um, MSS sleep system. MMS sleep system. It comes up all the time. Is it MMS, military modular sleep system? Or is it MMSS, military modular sleep system? Or is it MSS, modular sleep system? It's referred to all, all different ways, but technically military wise, it's modular sleep system. I think it's MSS, technically. Anyway. But this, if you don't know, is the bivy bag for the system. Best bivy that I've ever had. It's regarded worldwide as like the best bivy, but I vouch for them. I've literally slept in puddles in that bag. Bulletproof. So obviously, that's one that's not going because certain things. So my sleep system, bulletproof. I'll have, you know, my gear, bulletproof. But the interesting thing about all this is when you... Oh, and here's the bag. Okay, so I have been here because this was all with me. So this is the bag. This is the extreme cold weather part of the sleep system. So modular sleeping, intermediate cold, intermediate cold. So this goes with that bivy. So I have been here because this was well with me on my last trip. There's the black bag as it's known. What's in here? Oh, so this I recommend. I tell people all the time when I teach people, I say, Hey, first thing you need to do for cold weather camping is to get yourself a pair of Heli Hansen ski pants. You can see these I've had for 10 years. But I just, I can't get rid of them. Look at all these, all the damage. Repair, shoe goo. But basically, it's just a ski pant. Some of them are Gore-Tex. This is just a nylon. But they are waterproof. They have a bubble inside of them. But I live in these when I'm in the woods. This is what I wear. So everybody go out, go to Goodwill, get a pair of Heli Hansen ski pants or Columbia's or whatever brand. You will love them. My routine, everything's about routine. So when I take people up, I'll, I tell them, okay, the first thing we do when we hit camp is what? And I train or I teach them, it's called Geronimo. Whether it's 80 degrees, or 20 degrees, we set up Geronimo, which is just a tarp that we hang. So that may, no matter what, if it starts dumping, we've got a place where our gear is safe and we're safe. So first thing always, get to camp, Widowmaker check, right? The four W's, Widowmaker, wind, wood, Wigglies. What's the other one? Water. Then we find a place and set up Geronimo, which is, or I'm sorry, Geronimo, the Alamo, Alamo, Alamo. Set that up, very important. So I have that routine, boom, we set that up. Then at sunset, the routine that I was taught by my grandpa, I think, is boom, you see that sun start to set, you can feel it. Now we switch from our daytime clothes, whatever it is, even when it's warm, we're gonna get that shit off and we're gonna switch into those pants. We're gonna get our sweater, get everything ready. Because that sun goes down quick, especially in the forest. Right? So everything's ready to go. We're making that transition. We want to keep that core body heat going. Don't want to lose that. Right? Because if you lose it, you've got it all going. It gets cold. Now you're cold. So you've lost that temperature. Now you're changing. And you've got to rebuild that. So that's calories your body's burning to get back that, that temperature that you shouldn't have lost. That's why you think about these things. Anyway, those are the pants. <coughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. This thing's full of killer gear. So this is just a lightweight Condor assault pack. 
that I've used many times. Here's my dump pouch. If you don't know what a dump pouch is, look it up. You should definitely have one strapped onto either you or your bag at all times because this is where you're grabbing things, possum mentality, as you're moving. And there you go, there's some birch bark. Look at that. There's some moleskin. So as you're moving, you have this pouch. And when you pass assets, it's called possum mentality. If you watch that urban survival video, I talk about it. And it's from Dave Canterbury from the Pathfinder School. Dave Canterbury, I think everyone knows who that is. I don't know if he invented it or came up with it, but it's basically that as the possum's moving, it's always stopping and grab, grabbing resources it's passing. So, for example, I'm walking and I came across that birch bark. Well, where I'm going, I don't know if there's going to be birch bark. So as I pass it, I'm going to grab some. Not all of it, but some. Because I don't know if I'm going to find it. You know, when I get to where I'm going, is there birch bark? I have no idea. So, possum mentality is you grab things as you're moving. And then if you're, you know, if you're firing weapons, this is a dump pouch for ammo. Magazines, they go in here. Oh, God. Oh. This is a, um... Space blanket, but these are the good ones, so it's a heavy duty space blanket. I've had this literally for 10 years, and I can prove it. <laughs> this is just a rare one because it's military green. But <laughs> let's see if I open it up, you'll see. Look at all these patches. So, this is from Sparks from being close to fires. There's got to be who knows dozens of these little duct tape patches on it but I use this as a ground cover and an emergency it's got the um, silver great blankets so it's just an industrial space blanket the ones that I'm sure there's some in here electronics thumb drives those are important to have on you um, there's got to be one in here, but these are bow fangs in here, walkie-talkies. But basically, the cheapos, they're still good to throw in a pocket. It was a nice right in the rain it's for mapping and stuff. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's my butt pack. See, it's almost like an adrenaline rush. I get in this stuff, I'm like, oh, oh God. Because this is all very killer gear. It's been with me for a long time. So it's exciting to see it. And instantly my mind is exploding with, I gotta do a video on that. I gotta do a video on that. Oh, we could do this video. Oh God, I could use that for, right? But again, how much of this stuff can I keep? Here's my Sawyer water filter system. Hey. It's a great old um, bandana, Sorry. Boy Scout. You'll remember to close that later, right? Oh, yeah. A lot of times people forget. Oh, I always close it. You probably do. You're probably the only one only. Yeah, no problem. Thanks a lot. Appreciate yeah. So this is an old bandana. Tiger Cubs. I was a Tiger Cub. It's orange. It's just nostalgic. Important to always have something fluorescent orange on you, like that bandana from earlier in case you need to get rescued. Cheapo multi-tool, but hey, it's got everything. I've had this for, I don't know, five years. Spoon. There's the um, plunger for the Sawyer. It's important to have these to backwash it. Not so much as that, but as a multi-purpose, this is how you irrigate wounds. So you'd fill this up with water, and then from as high up as you can get, you're going to spray that water, push it down onto that open wound. You're irrigating it. Probably wet wipes. But great U.S. military butt pack, bulletproof. I think I did a video overnighter with just the butt pack. 
I don't know if that was on the old channel that got deleted, but this has been in videos before. What else? Yeah, see, I get excited. I don't even remember what I was talking about. I always grab these. They're just little cheapos. Good to have gear on you. Some nice Ukos. Notches. Oh, God, there's more. It never ends. These are great. Just a little credit card, flexible mirror. Weighs nothing, literally. Probably a gram. There you go. You can see me. Signal mirror, right? So if you have to do flashing SOS or rescue, planes, tanks, whatever, weighs nothing. Another bandana. I remember this one. This is cool. This is jute twine. Oh, no, this isn't jute. This is um, waxed repair line. This is what you use with your sail needle that you'd have strapped onto your knife, if you know that trick, with the Gorilla Tape, more Bushcraft, Garberg, anything. Anyway, you, you strap a sail needle on, a big, fat sewing needle. It's got an oversized eye in it, so you don't have to struggle trying to get it through. And this is the repair stuff. It's just line. I'm not sure if it's jute. I think it's all natural, I believe, so it's probably jute. Good stuff. There's a sail needle. Let me turn it around. These I use, these are great. You know, they're 99 cents, but they're dedicated red. You're not gonna be able to see it here, but great for maps, right? So you'd have that poncho over you and you're looking at a map. It's just a great dedicated red light, red only. So here's a sail needle and you can see the difference. So here's a normal sewing needle. See that tiny, tiny little eye? Can you see it? Okay. And then here's a sail needle. Look at that eye. <laughs> you can't miss that. You'd have to be real, real blind to miss that. So that goes with this. So there's your repair kit. Oh, here's my old, is this Fall Raven? Yeah. No, fucking even, it's the DC-4. It's a sharpening stone. Have this forever too. Just real basic, two sides. You know, important to have. These are great, they're little um, cotton, big otter. Anyway, it's just a towel, so you drop water on it, and boom, it explodes. They're actually pretty cool. You can use them for tinder, or clean yourself. There's just a standard sewing kit. That wouldn't do you much good. Not like you're gonna have time to sit around and sew, but it's better than nothing. So you can see where this is going. I mean, oh. Bank line, number 36, tarred. Incredible stuff. You know, everyone talks about paracord, but this stuff's just as good. When you get this, what company is this? Dr. Bank? I can't remember the name. There's one company that's just radically cheaper, and it's the best stuff. You know, so this thing's, you know, I think these are 16 bucks. They used to be this big. Dr. Bank, Dr. Line, can't remember. But this is just a waxed line. It's from fishing. It's called Bank Line. Number 36 is the standard. So it's just three pieces of cordage wrapped together. And it creates one piece. It's extremely strong. It's flammable. And it's tarred, so it's real. It bites down on things. So that basically, if you're into bushcraft or knots, this is what you use with paracord. Because this will bite onto the paracord, where paracord on paracord will slip. Anyway, 
Tard Bank Line, number 36. I'm gonna have to take a break. It's overwhelming. The overwhelming part. But these are great. I love these bags. I've already cut the lines off, but anyway, can act as a little backpack. But they're fluorescent orange. What's this? Oh, this is a camp chair that I made years ago. So it's just a piece of. I think it's a piece of parachute that I found. And basically, what you do is you stitch in the bottom a four inch tube that you just sew in real crudely. You can see here I just sewed it in all the way down. And then at the top, you'll just put a simple overhand knot, creating a loop, a piece of paracord. And basically you build a tripod. Right, so you just build the tripod in the forest. It's a bushcraft thing. You set up that tripod, you run another piece through that hole that I stitched in in the bottom, that tube, and then you hang it on the tripod and you've got a chair. It's a chair, that's all. It weighs nothing. You know, so for this, what's this way? A couple grams, not even an ounce, I'd say. And you've got a bushcraft chair or a chair. You can set up real quick using stuff off the land. It's a fun project if you've got, if you want to learn bushcrafty stuff or you've got kids. It's a great project. Oh boy. It's too much. It's too much. There's nice um, cordage. This I'll probably dump. I'll probably just put this in my vehicle. It's tow cordage, but this is, I use the same exact stuff, but in you know, military green. This wouldn't be you any good if you're out trying to hide or evade. <laughs> but this, um, some people call this monkey tape. This is a little thicker than monkey tape, but basically it's just um, toe strap cordage. And some of this stuff is rated for 1,500 pounds, 2,500 pounds. Anyway, good stuff to have. So this, I have another one that lives on my backpack. That's in case you need to repel or get down, get out, get over, get through, right? This is my favorite tent. I've had this forever. Right now I have four of these. It's by REI. They're called the um, Quarter Dome T2. It's an ultralight tent. I'm not going to open it, but this whole thing weighs, I've weighed it before, I think it barely weighs a pound. And it's a cool system the way it sets up. Basically, it's, it looks like a T, two T's, and half the T is orange and half the T is silver. So that way, when you, when you rip it out, you know, real quick, you throw it, bum, 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 it snaps open. You know, it's just like normal tentage, the, the um, tent poles, so it's got the shot cord inside. Anyway, real quick, you just pull, 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 it snaps together, ta -ta -ta -ta, and it creates like two T's. And the, it's color coordinated to the grommets that are on the tent. So, anyway, you do it. I can have that thing set up in under a minute, easy. And it's just a little micro tent. Super cool. So I've had that one forever, but again, there you go. There's the tragedy. Right now I have four of them. I've offered them to people. I said, hey, I've got these great tents. No, no, no. I'm good. I'm good. People don't want it. Here's the um, second part. This is the jungle bag or the... It's for the M MMS sleep system. Technically, what do they call? Modular patrol bag. Patrol bag is what they're called, or jungle bag. So you can see it's this, this, and then, where's my Gore-Tex bivy? Here it is, and this. So that is the sleep system. 
right? So you'll see this all the time. So the black goes inside the green, and the green with the black goes inside the divvy. And this is rated down to, I think on its own, it goes to negative 15, but then you need to be wearing the proper military underwear, which is the polypro polypropylene or the waffle underwear. And with that underwear on and you're this kind of a military, you know, polypropylene cap, you've got your wool socks on, your gloves, anything, it's down to 30 plus, negative 30. It's an incredible system. Yeah, I'm going to take a break. <laughs> That's only what? What have you been recording for? Maybe 10 minutes? You can already see. You can see where the tragedy is starting to unfold. Because out of all, all, of, all of this, I'm basically going to be able to take none of it. It's very tragic, but that's the reality. You have to understand, these are things that you fall in love with, but this kind of gear or anything, any kind of gear, no matter what it is, you have to be able to just toss it. Even whatever it is, you get connected to the stuff. But in real world situations, you're dropping weight. So if you're on the move and you're getting chased and... Oh, another plane. Look at that guy coming in. Oh, I couldn't focus on him. Nice jet. But that's just the reality. you got to dump. Dump, dump, dump. It doesn't matter. You know, even the vehicle. So imagine you're in some sort of situation. You've got a million dollar Ferrari or Labrador. Who the hell cares? Dump it. It's your life. You know, if you're dead, you can't get another. You can't enjoy the Ferrari. That's how I always think about it. All it's material stuff. You got to dump it. That's just the reality. If you want to survive, you can't have all of it. You've got to dump weight and dump possessions. So it's going to be tragic. You know, tragic that nobody wants it, really. That's the most sad part about it, because I believe that people will need this stuff. And when they need it, they need it now. And when you need things now, that means everybody needs things now. Which means supply and demand. Very difficult to get. So you should have it. Just one system. Like what I'm, you know, having to tone down to. The one system. So the one military sleep system. The one sleeping clothing system. The one weapon system. The one cooking system. And, and so on and so on. It's important. 